child is born there are amazing things that parents can do to stimulate that brain development and you know in the brain there is something called um, neural connections that are forming at a very rapid rate when the child is very young exactly. and parents you know they need to stimulate these uh, stimulate the brain so that these neural connections develop at a very rapid rate and research has shown that the more complex these neural connections the more intelligent and the more intuitive and the more well developed the child is so you know the parents role cannot be underestimated and uh, the parents play, play, play a much more important role than teachers because remember the child is only in the preschool for 2 to 3 hours the rest But of the time my next question to you <laughs> ah and the yeah. rest of the time the child is with the parent and there is so much a parent can do to stimulate the child throughout the day and we are not just talking only about paper pens the stimulation you know getting the child to help in the house taking the child out and getting the child to observe nature Maybe describing nature. things That's yes true. yes and um, and you know uh, making sure that all the child's senses are stimulated so there is so much that the parent can do to give your child that edge that extra advantage before the child even steps into preschool and parents must remember that after 5 years these neural connections begin to slow down It really is very important for a parent to start stimulating the child right from the first month onwards you know by using different kinds of uh, sensory stimulation um, you know the kits and flash cards a child before the age of 5 is very focused I mean what is in front of the child the child just focuses on it and pays attention to it but after 5 years the mind is much more distracted and parents need to take advantage of this uh, this um, aspect of the child's um, uh, you know psychology when it is said that the younger the child the easier to teach so it is easier to teach a 1 year old child than a 2 year old child it is easier to teach a 2 year old child than a 3 year old child okay. easier to te- teach a 3 year old child than a 4 year old child now when we say i would like to use the word conditioning yeah. that is the better word i would use it is easier to condition a young a child who is younger and um, you know um, the sooner a parent begins it is better because then the child is conditioned to focus conditioned to learn conditioned to try new things conditioned to experiment conditioned not to be afraid of failure and that can begin at a very very young age and these are not things that preschools teach preschools will teach them a b c d and you know math and social science and coloring and handwriting but these are only some parts of the skills that a child needs to be learning there's so much a child needs to learn and that only a parent can do Uh, grandparents are an amazing component in the child's yes. life they yeah. enrich the child's life they you know they give a lot of inputs that parents cannot give but unfortunately a large part of that also comes with pampering over pampering yeah, i would say yeah. important so you know grandparents can bring a lot of cultural enrichment and um, a lot of security and a lot of love unconditional love that is so important for a child which grandparents can give but i think the the challenge here is to um, sort of make sure that uh, there is also that component of discipline discipline that allows the child to know you know um, uh, to know where a line can, should not be crossed uh, and discipline really makes a child feel secure when there are boundaries a child feels secure and so it should be a kind of a, i think the challenge for parents who live with them, their in-laws or with their parents is to know where to um, have a mix and match of grand parental interference in the parenting aspect and where to draw the line and gently explain to grandparents no there is this this is a way that i would like to like to raise my child because Now it's important to give parents grandparents reasons because they feel that they have a right over the child the grandchild and many of them feel very offended when uh, their son or their daughter in law or their son in law or their daughter says no this is not the way things should be done because they feel that they have already raised children and they know how to do it but then you know they are not aware of the fact that things have changed the world has changed 
and there are many things that a little child needs to um, be taught or be or be trained in or be conditioned to that really did not matter when um, when we were there, when, yeah exactly when we were children or when grandparents were parents so this is where the parent will really have to walk a kind of a you know a tightrope uh, a kind of a, how much of grandparental interference should be allowed and how much of discipline has disciplining has to be done and this has to be made quite clear to grandparents but i i feel that having a grandparent is a wonderful thing for a child the secret to get your child to listen to you is treat your child with respect talk to your child with respect make your child feel valued and your child will listen to you you don't have to shout you don't have to use abusive language and above all you don't have to be physically abusive respect 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 that's all a human being is asking for and that is the secret platforms like parenting for you they really help a parent to um, streamline i'm using the word streamline their parenting skills i mean they have these vague ideas these vague ideas that they have picked up from their parents maybe their own grandparents maybe reading things from uh, the internet maybe yeah. maybe googling but then you know it's all a kind of um, a, you know in patches in bits and pieces now um, right. but a platform like parenting for you stitches it all together and um, yeah. you know makes it easy for a parent to um, one um, get their parenting act together i would say get their parenting act together number one number two um, they have a platform where they can um, clarify doubts exactly. where they can have their questions answered they can discuss they can debate they can debate uh, discuss with uh, professionals yeah and share ideas with other parents and plus you know with a lot of materials they will know how to stimulate their child mentally emotionally physically maybe even spiritually and um, you know they learn good parenting skills and they can raise emotionally secure children which really is the key focus of parenting because if your child is emotionally secure happy and confident that really is the key to success you don't need anything else your child would be successful if your child is confident emotionally secure and a happy child academics comes second i always say academics comes second That's first right. let your child be emotionally secure happy and confident and i think for, for, for parents to be able to achieve this goal uh, platforms like parenting for you are so important because you'll bring in experts who give them tips do this don't do this these these things would benefit your child this you would be potentially be harmful I yeah guess. exactly so so they really know you know whether what they're doing is right or whether what they're doing is wrong and uh, those flash cards and things like that they really build a child's memory power they 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 enhance the child's memory power which later on stands them in good stead when they go to school this will really help them when you they go to school is a neural uh, neuroplasticity exactly exactly it enhances their memory skills and their their ability to retain information and parenting is an art it, it is an art you need to learn it you're not born with that skill and uh, uh, you know a platform like parenting for you will help them to hone their skills and to become better parents and my advice to parents is please focus on being a good parent uh, because i find that these days parents have too many other distractions especially digital distractions that is number 1 yeah. number 2 yeah. maybe maybe there is there is also career distractions you know focusing too much on your career too much on your work I think I, your child should become your main focus and everything else should be secondary. So when your child becomes that main focus and when you're determined to raise a masterpiece, you raise a masterpiece. Afterwards, you know, if your child you you're the potter, you're the potter. So when you are focusing on really creating that excellent pot, then you have an excellent pot. Now if you don't focus on creating an excellent pot, and the pot becomes distorted then who do you blame not me yourself i mean there are external factors of for which you have no control i know that but then if you are home and your parenting skills are good then you're going to raise a child who can withstand all the pressures that assault the child externally because your home has become a very safe loving home you have become your child's best friend 
and with that you've given your child so much of security you're raising a very brave child you're raising a very emotionally secure child you're raising a child who's unafraid to take risks and so i tell parents let your child be your first priority everything else comes second your career your friends your digital world your amusement that comes second i mean i'm not saying sacrifice it don't sacrifice it but your child especially should... during the first couple of years up to the yeah, age of especially five. up to the age of 10 up to the age of 10 that's true it's very very important to make sure that you focus on your parenting skills so that's what i would like to tell parents because it's a really win win situation for everybody if they if they pay attention to this